Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm now going to be answering question number eight from the international um, IGCSE of Cambridge from October, November 2009, paper four. Um, this question is about you know, statistics. Here we have a frequency table which shows 50 students which are timed, which are timed when running one kilometer and the results are shown in the table. So you have these groups of timings. So two people, for example, completed this one kilometer between four and 4.5 minutes, and seven between 4.5 and five, and so on and so forth in this table. We got to write down what's called the modal time. Okay, so normally a question in statistics asks you for the mode, but as we have a grouped table, we cannot find the mode because we don't know the actual values of each of the times. So the best we can do is give what's called a modal class or the modal group. Okay, so that's why it's not asking for the modal thing, the modal time, meaning the modal group or you know the modal time interval, the modal class. Okay, they won't actually ask you for the mode in a question like this because you don't know what the values are. All right, so we don't know what the values are, so we can't find the mode, but we can find the group which has the most number of entries in it. And you can see that the, the frequency tells you um, the number of entries in each group. So the one that's got the highest frequency is the group 5.5 to 6. So that's what we write down for this answer. 5.5, time is between 5.5 and 6. That is the group which contains the highest number of entries, the modal interval. And part B says calculate estimate of the mean time. Again, they can't ask us to find the mean because we don't know what the actual values of any of these items are. There are two items or two times between 4 and 4.5, but I don't know what they are. The, the, the table doesn't have that detail because it's a grouped frequency table. So that's why the word estimate is used here, okay? because we don't know what the times are. If we had a normal frequency table and we had an actual time, an actual time like, for example, you know, um, 4.2 minutes and that was five point you know four point seven minutes for example then we would know what to multiply frequency by to find the sum of those two, two times it's two times we know that when we um, you know add them together we're going to get a certain sum and there's seven times we know if you add them together we get the certain sum but here we don't know what those times are so we have to estimate like we have to make an estimate now to estimate um, in a frequency table that is grouped we, we take what's called the mid interval value the mid interval value. So I'm going to take the mid interval, which is basically halfway between these values. So to find the mid interval, you take the value, the beginning of the group and the end of the group, you add them together and divide by two. In this case, that's going to give me 4.25. That's the mid interval here. And between 4.5 and 5, 4.75. Between 5 and 5.5, 5.25. Between 5.5 and 6, it's 5.75. Between 6 and 6.5 is 6.25, and between 6.5 and 7 is 6.75. Those are the mid interval values, and now I have something to multiply the frequency by. So there's two times, somewhere between 4 and 5, I don't know what they are, but I'm taking the halfway value to give me an estimate, so it's 2 times 4.25. That's what the sum of those two times are going to be, 2 times 4.25. So I'm going to do that for each of these. So I'll do four times, I'll just write the steps here. So I'll just put some space there. So I'm going to have an, an estimate of the mean is going to be 2 times 4.25 plus, I'll have 7 times 4.75 plus 8 times 5.25 plus 18 times 5.75 plus 10 times 6.25 plus 5 times 6.75 and all of that has to be divided by the total number of times altogether that were recorded and to do to find that we could add up all these frequencies, but we were told in the question there were 50 students are timed. So I know from the question that these will add up to 50. And if you want to make sure, you can. That's 15. 15 plus 18 is 33. Plus 7 is 40. Plus 10 is 
50. So we see there's 50, but you don't have to do that because they tell us in the question there's 50 students. So that is divided by 50. Okay, so you got to be careful here. A lot of people, they'll say, oh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, divide by six. No, there's not six entries. There's These are the number of entries. There's two entries in this group and seven in this group and eight in this group. So totally there's 50 entries. Okay, not this the, the number of columns. All right, so you have to divide that by 50 and that will give you an estimate of the mean. An estimate of the mean. It won't be the actual mean. It'll be an estimate of the mean. So these steps are per perfectly sufficient for you to get the marks for the method marks. And then you have to make sure that you enter everything correctly into your calculator. So you have 2 times 4.25. So you've got to be careful. So let's put this like this. 2 times 4.25. 4.25 so you'll be very careful plus 7 times 4.75 okay plus 8 times 5.25 plus you're going to have 18 times 5.75 plus 10 times 6.25 which is 62.5 anyway plus 5 times 6.75 Pl oops plus 5 times 6.75 now it's very easy to make mistakes in this so I'm going to do a double check afterwards divided by 50 so what you should do is just make a check. So you have 5 times 6.75. Yep, and you have 10 times 6.25. Yep, and you have 18 times 5.75, 8 times 5.25, 7 times 4.75, and 2 times 4.25. Okay, everything seems right. Press equals. And that gives you 5.67 as an estimated mean. And then that's um, in minutes. Okay, that's estimated mean. Um, and does it make sense? Yeah, it's like somewhere between four and seven. It's like if you get a number, if you get a number that's not, you know, it's outside of the range of these numbers, of course you made something wrong. You've done something wrong because the mean is going to be somewhere between these values, between four and seven. Okay, so it has to be somewhere in this area here. If you get something like, for example, that says, you know, one point something or, you know, ten point something, you've done, you know, you've done something wrong. It has to be somewhere within this range. Okay, so that's an estimate of the mean. Then part C says a new frequency table is made from the results shown in the table above. Complete the table by filling in the two empty boxes. So they've grouped them in a different way. So as you see here, you're grouped between four and four point five and 4.5 to 5 and so on. Here you've grouped them between 4 and 5.5. So they've taken the numbers between 4 and 5.5 and added them together. And the second group is between 5.5 and 6. Okay, that one they kept the same. That's the same as before. And the last one is from 6 to 7. Okay, so they've grouped them in this way. They've taken these numbers in one group. All right, that's from 4 to 5.5. And then they've taken these numbers in a second group, which is the same as they were before. And then uh, they've taken a third group of these. That's the third group, as you can see. So basically, you've got to add these together. So there's going to be 17 in this group and 15 in that group. So you're going to have 17 in the first group. And you're going to have 15 in the last group. And the total still must be... 50 okay and if you can see you add 17 plus 18 that gives you 35 30 plus 15 gives you 50 so we know that we've got the right you know done the right thing and there's the new frequency table and now for part d actually it's not part d it's c part two anyway this question here is about drawing a histogram from the information in the new table so first of all, I've got the new table ready. That's the new table that we just made. 
in the previous question and we got to draw a histogram using this now a histogram is where you have frequency density on the y-axis and in this case the time in minutes on the x-axis so the frequency density is not the frequency okay because in a histogram it's the area of the bar which represents the frequency not the height of the bar okay and that's especially important when you have bars of differing widths which in this case we do this bar here is going to be 1.5 um, units wide and this is you can see from 5.5 to 0, 0 0.5 and this is one they're all differing widths when that happens then the um, height of the bar will give a distorted kind of view, um, um, kind of um, indication or a visual visually distorted representation of the frequency some bars will look way bigger than they should so in order to solve that problem what we do is we use frequency density instead of um, frequency on the y-axis so the frequency density makes up for the extra width or the less width and basically what what the frequency density is equal to is the frequency divided by the interval okay so for example we can check here and see what's happened 18 divided by 0.5 is 36 and we can see that this 5.5 to 6 bar that they've drawn here for us goes up to 36 so we can kind of like be rest assured that we're on the right tracks when we're finding the frequency density so we've got to do the same for these two we've got to divide 17 by 1.5 okay so i'm going to do 17 divided by 1.5 that gives you 34 over 3, which is 11 and 1 third. So I'll just write that as 11.3. 11.3. And then you got the other one, which is 15 divided by 1, which is 15. Okay, so that's going to be 15. So the first bar is going to go from 4 to 5. Now be careful here. The x axis here, or the t axis, starts doesn't start from 4, it starts from 0. Then it's like got this to show that they've basically you know left out the first few numbers and they're starting from four at this point so it's from four that we have to start and you have to go up to 11.3 now 11.3 is like 11 and one third okay so we can see that up to here is 10 and then you can see that's 11 12 so each of these is one so it's going to be very close to the top of that particular section of 11 so it's just above 11 so i'll just try and do as accurate as i can just above 11 but we have to start from 4, sorry, we have to start from 4, just above 11, go across until that bar. So we're starting from 4, okay, because it's from 4 to 5.5. Okay, so that's the, the first bar, and I'll just make a little mark here that, that what we've done is 11.3. Okay, that's the point that we used. Okay, and for the last one, it's 15. Now, that's pretty simple. 15 goes across from here, and it goes from 6 to 7, so we've got to stop at 7. So 15 is here, so we're going to go from this point here up to 7, and we stop at 7, and down. So there we've drawn the histogram. Okay, that's the histogram drawn. Um, complete accurate histogram to show the information. Okay, that's part 2, C part 2. Now for C part 3, it says find the number of students represented by one square centimeter on the histogram. Now if you were to measure with a ruler, um, you know, especially on the actual exam itself, you would find that this, this, this is one square. Let me just do it in a different color so it doesn't confuse it with the histogram. Okay, let me just do this. And make it thin. Let's say, okay, if you were to consider one square on this histogram, this would be one square centimeter. Can't really see it, can you? Too light. Okay, you can, can just about see. So that's like one square centimeter on your histogram. If you were, if you were to measure it on your, um, you know, on your graph, you'll see that's one square centimeter. As long as your the photocopy of the past paper you got is not being distorted too much, but that's what it would be. That would be one square centimeter. So what that means is, okay, that if I look at these values that I've got here, or this histogram that I've got here, the one that's easiest to to kind of check is this one because it's made up of an exact number of squares i want to know how many students is represented by one centimeter squared on the histogram so if we look at the 67 group 
there are six squares which represent 15 students. Okay, we can see there's six squares representing 15 students. Six one centimeter squares representing 15 students. So that means one square must represent 15 over six students. So that's, that's equal to 2.5 because 16 goes into, that's like five over two, which is 2.5 students. So one square represents 2.5 students. So 2.5, okay? So the number of students represented by one centimeter squared is 2.5. And we can check to make sure that we have got the right idea by, for example, looking how many squares are in, in, this, in this bar. We got one, two, three, four, five, Let's do it properly again. So that's one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares. And then you've got this one fifth of a square. One fifth is, is 0.2. So it's 7.2. If I multiply that by 2.5, I should get 18 because it's representing 18 students. So let's see if I get 2.5 times 7.2. 7.2 multiplied by 2.5 and that gives me 18 so we can see we're on the right tracks and we can even check with the first one if you want to be doubly sure we don't really have to we could have stopped when I wrote 2.5 I'm just showing you how it fits in so we can see here we got one two three four five six we got six whole squares and then we got that's one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth that's three fifths so that's six whole squared plus what three fifths which is 6.6 .6. and then we got one third plus one third plus uh, one third um, of 0.2 you understand that so, so that, that's basically that's going to be um, one one of these squares is 0.2 and you've got basically so that's going to be 6.8 then right because you're going to have those three parts of 0.2 added together will give you 0.2 Okay, because this point two has been split up into three parts. It's one third of it. Okay, because it is eleven point three, right? So those three, th those three thirds gives all together will give you point two. So that's six point six plus point two, which is six point eight. Let's take six point eight and multiply it by two point five, and it should give us the number in the first group. Six point eight. That's the number of squares in that section times two point five. That gives us seventeen which is exactly what we have to find. So as I said, you don't really have to go through this last step that I'm just showing you, just to make sure. We could have stopped straight away when we got 2.5. We should be sure six squares represents 15 new students. Therefore, one, squ one square represents 15 over six students, which is 2.5. Okay, the last part I just did to just to show you that, how it fits in with the rest of the question. Okay, so there we have it, the answer to uh, part C, part three, and that ends the question. The next question is, something else yes so we finished this question um, other questions from this paper of October November 2009 uh, paper 4 you'll find in the playlist that should appear in this section here other questions from the topic of statistics you'll find in this playlist you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and at the top of the page you will find um, a card taking you to another past paper that you might want to watch and um, thank you for watching and see you soon.